Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Now, with the up and running of this facility, what does this mean to the Kenyan coffee farmer? Now, uh, what this means for Kenyan coffee farmer is that uh, the challenges that have been there in the sector you know, uh, are going to be addressed, putting the farmer at the center of it. Because these facilities used to belong to the farmers, the coffee farmers in, 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 in Kenya. They were taken over by cartels that have been causing havoc in the sector. We have taken them back and we want to restructure them, put them, put the best facilities available for coffee processing and marketing, and then bring in farmers back to the management. That, that is the roadmap. And uh, in, the, in our plan, we already put in money to make sure that modern warehouses, this, this facility is refurbished and make it a modern warehouse. The lab, we want to set, put up a state-of-the-art lab that will be able also again to support uh, the milling of coffee and to make sure that farmers produce the best coffee available. And then, of course, we are also putting in resources to support uh, support farmers with the inputs that are required and therefore uh, we believe if farmers bring their coffee here the uh, rules of large scale operation will also help them get the best price available and at the same time reduce the costs that are involved in in milling and handling yeah, and because when you know a small cooperative society there and that does its own milling another one does its own milling the costs go up but if you bring the coffee together and you, are, you, mail, you mail together, you are able to reduce the, the costs and therefore you are able to reap the benefits that are, uh, that are crew from a large scale operation. Right. And sir, with the COVID-19 in the country, a lot of Kenyans are asking, are they food secure? So what's the status of the food strategic, the strategic food reserve in the country? We have already explained that uh, we are moving away from the old practice where government was storing food and uh, you know you are taken to ncpb stores and then you are told look we have a lot of food yet that is a fraction of the food that is available in the countries what we are doing is assessing what is available across the country and our balance sheet clearly shows that we have enough reserves of food to keep us going until the end of may we have done a, a balance sheet surveying uh, maize millet, sorghum, beans, dairy products, you know, milk, uh, potatoes, uh, those are the, the wheat. So we've done a survey that looks at all the staples, most of the staples that the country utilizes. And we, have, we can give you with a lot of confidence that there is no challenge of availability of food uh, uh, in the country. For me, we can see in between uh, uh, the harvesting season, which will be late July and uh, end of May, we could have some shortages. And uh, that is why we have worked out uh, what we require to, to, to deal with the shortfall. And that's why we have come up with two million bags of yellow maize, because the country consumes around uh, around uh, around uh, 450 million bucks per month. Our assessment shows that we have those quantities available between now and end of May. Uh, what could affect, of course, uh, pricing uh, at the end of the day, especially when we have this uh, uh, corona crisis, is panic buying and also holding, people keeping it fearing that uh, you know, there is going to be shortages. Uh, and, and I think that's what is happening with maize. There are people keeping the maize, hoping government will come in to buy. Uh, you know, millers are also waiting, look, looking and waiting, hoping that government will come in. So that's why we are making it very, very clear that there is no plan that government has of buying maize locally. Government is still keenly looking at what is happening in the market. Uh, if we see uh, market prices changing to the detriment of the consumer, we will not hesitate from invoking 
uh, the law that is available to control prices. We have a law that can be invoked and we invoke it very reluctantly, the Price Control Act, which we could use to fix prices. How soon is that going to be then? No, we, we, we are saying, we are still looking at the situation. Uh, it hasn't reached there. We believe the importation and other measures can still stabilize the prices uh, where we are. But in case there is an escalation, we are telling the, 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 the millers, uh, the retailers, don't take advantage of this situation. We are also asking farmers, and, and, and uh, we want again to really make it very, very clear. As long as you observe the guidelines that have been given by the Ministry of Health, continue with your farming activities. We are asking retailers in the shops, the angry dealers, continue with your trade in your shops. Nobody, there is no order anywhere from the government that has uh, said that shops be closed. As long as you have observed the curfew hours, when the curfew hours have arrived, you close your shop at that time. Continue retailing food, continue retailing fertilizers, continue retailing chemicals for the farmers. We are also asking the farmers, continue going to your farm and carrying out your farming activities. There is no order from the government that you close your farms. I've been told there are very overseas administrators who have been even stopping people from going to their farms. Their coffee auction was suspended. Is it still under suspension? And if so, when is it what going to happen? Coffee, uh, the coffee auction, I'm sure they're also going to resume uh, quickly. Uh, we know there have been challenges in the coffee sector because there are one or two dominant players there that are also keep, keep trying to, 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 to manipulate uh, uh, the trading there. But we are, uh, I wanted to also tell you, we are already also coming up with regulations on how to to manage the, the, the auction, the, even the, the coffee auction. But we are also, uh, you know, uh, looking to guiding these markets to completely automate. We don't think that we must continue physically going to the auctions to do manual bids. This is where corruption also takes place. That's why there has been reluctance to digitize these markets. The regulations we are coming up with will require all the tra trading, uh, all the auctions to be automated. The use of technology. One way of reducing collusion is using technology, using reducing the discretion and also using technology to bring transparency. So part of the regulations we are going to bring, I will also be giving guidance uh, to that. Uh, coffee, uh, the coffee auction, I'm sure they are also going to resume. Uh, quickly. Uh, we know there have been challenges in the coffee sector because there are one or two dominant players there that are also keep, keep trying to, 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 to manipulate uh, uh, the trading there. But we are, I, I wanted to also tell you, we are already also coming up with regulations on how to, to manage the, the, the auction, the, even the, the coffee auction. The horticulture sector is virtually collapsed. What are the measures that you're putting in to ensure that these people are back to track you know, after COVID? Well, of course, uh, the, the, the horticulture sector, especially because of the challenges in Europe, who are largely, this is where we were largely doing the marketing as, as, as a major problem. Uh, and uh, it was, it's, it's very difficult to come up with uh, immediate solutions to, to that sector. But uh, what we are saying is uh, uh, those who have invested in this sector to, to take contingency measures to manage their costs, uh, because the biggest problem is the cost you incur in doing farming when there is no market. So just like the other sectors are downscaling their operations and managing costs, we are also asking the tax sector to do, to do the same. But we will continue serving the market and then, of course, support them in, in, terms, of, uh, in terms of going back to, to, to their operations once the situation in in our markets improve. And finally, what reassurance do you have for the Kenyan farmers during this difficult time, of course? Of course, we, 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 we know that uh, uh, farming will be affected also in a big way uh, by this crisis, uh, especially uh, outside markets, exports. 
because horticulture sector, for example, is a big, 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 big export uh, sector, largely uh, done for export. Even the local markets will be affected, given that there are layout, lay layoffs of workers, uh, uh, even our hotel and uh, the, the, the hospitality industry is now largely closed. They are, they are going to be uh, uh, challenges, major challenges. Uh, uh, but we want our people to, uh, to not to lose hope, to know that uh, we will be through this crisis and opportunities will come, probably even bigger opportunities for, for farmers. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Most appreciated. Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Peter Munya, speaking to Metropole TV.